Hey again, guys, and welcome back. In a couple of mailbags ago, I got these uh, PZOZ, PZOZ, um, USB-C charge cables for my phone, um, and I figured this was a great time to test it out, but also to test out a few of the other cables I have around the house. Um, a couple, most of these are actually uh, very inexpensive. So this is a six foot, or I think it's longer, I think this might be 10 feet, um, dollar store one that cost me $4 Canadian. Um, these two are AliExpress specials, they're only like a foot or two. Um, they were like really cheap back the long time ago when USB-C was just starting. The Pizos one. Uh, this one here is a very expensive one when, again, when USB-C was just starting. Uh, this is an anchor cable and like it has no flexibility. I bought this for my wife uh, so she can have a, a long cord to charge her phone um, in bed. Actually, that's why I tend to buy long cords anyway. And there's a little bit of a special appearance here of my favorite cable. This one here, it is fairly short, uh, like three feet, and it has like a really thick plug here because it is it lights up but the weird thing is the USB-C plug end fits my phone the best out of all of these maybe not the anchor one I haven't used it that's a high quality cable but yeah this was from the dollar store for four bucks it is to be noted too that the only one here that's actually USB 3 seems to be the anchor cable so this whole thing is going to work by using my Redin RD6018 uh, hooked up to a little uh, stub end USB plug. I actually soldered this specifically so that it would be high current so I wouldn't lose any current on this end. And it'll be plugged into this uh, electronic load from Banggood. The reason I'm using this one specifically, not my new one, is that the USB connectors are directly on the board and it's a little bit more granular. I can dial the other one in very precisely but this is nice to just adjust live, even though I feel like the screen and the software leaves much to be desired. Now the way I'm going to gather data for these USB cables is that I'm going to check how much current it takes, uh, how much current we can pull uh, with this load to get it down to 4.5 volts on this end, because this end will stay 5 volts no matter what, then how much current it takes to um, to get down to uh, 4 volts on this end because I found that my phone can still charge at 4 volts not very quickly at that point but it can still charge at 4 volts so 4.5 and uh, 4 is what we're going to be testing on this side and then also I'm going to pull maybe you know an amp and see what the voltage drop is when pulling an amp the reason why I'm doing both these measurements is because I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, math to it to try to relate these to their lengths. So I kind of want to, you know, put it down to a standardized, you know, voltage drop per foot or per centimeter or whatever it's going to be. So that's why I need the, the current values and I need the voltage drop values. So that way I should get sort of like everyday use numbers and I should get some sort of comparison numbers. So let me set one up. I'll do one with you. I'll do the rest off camera and then I'll bring you back for the results. All right, let's start the test with my pink cable here. It is plugged into the little uh, USB adapter I have made. I'm going to have to cut in a uh, video of this thing working because with the lights it's pretty cool. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put up the um, fine adjust just a little bit, then use the um, course adjust. I'm going to go up up until it's 4.5. Okay, so 4.5 volts we got 1.72 amps. Okay, keep going up until we reach the 4 volt mark. Okay, 4 volts uh, 3.58 amps. And then we're going to crank this back down until we're down at the one amp mark and record the volts. Four 
4.73 volts. And that's the end of this test. And we can now repeat with a different cable. Bring you back when that's all done. All right, the results are in. I'm just gonna post the raw data up on your screen. You can screen capture it and uh, do your own interpretations of that as you will. Uh, but I think it's really important for everyone to know that uh, the first things first, like none of these are the same length. So if you check out the uh, graph on your screen right now, in the orange and the top row, you have the length in feet for you uh, continental types. And on the bottom and uh, the blue edges there on the, on the graph, that's the length in centimeters. And so, yeah, none are the same length. In fact, um, the Pisa's one came out at uh, 200 centimeters, so 200.5, so actually uh, two meters. But the longest one I had was huge, it was uh, three meters. Uh, that's the dollar store one at, uh, you know, four bucks. So, yeah, very different lengths indeed. Next graph you'll see on your screen is the current at a specific output voltage. Never mind the typo in the word output. Um, so higher is better and the uh, blue is the current at 4.5 volts and the orange is the current at 4 volts. So you'll see the uh, short white no strain relief. That's, uh, that's the one from the dollar store. But um, the LG G6 OEM, that's the other short white one, which is, uh, you know, just about three feet long. That's actually an OEM cable. I actually thought this was a Dollarama cable. But then when you look at these results, it's absolutely insane. I actually had to move up the current limit on the Reed-in RD6018 in order to uh, get a real uh, current graph on this one. So this one is an absolute beast, an OEM cable, which I'm glad I had. It's from my wife's uh, phone. Uh, this thing is an absolute monster. But if you'll see the long white dollar store one, which is the 10 foot one, um, that still performed admirably, still um, at four volts, putting out, you know, uh, two and a quarter amps. So that's pretty good. The Pizos, however, performed quite well. Uh, hitting nearly 4 amps at the 4 volt uh, threshold there. Pretty good. And the, uh, in fact, it seems to have outperformed the anchor in the uh, 4 volt test and indeed also in the 4.5 volt test. But my favorite one, the pink one, did fairly well as well. Don't forget though, it's much shorter. Next up is a graph that I'm trying to relate the cables uh, performance to their length. So I set the output current to one amp and this is the voltage drop that we are observing. So really the lower that the wasted voltage is, the, the voltage we lost is, the better performing the cable. And as you can see actually the Pizos outperformed the anchor but the top performer is the LG G6 with the Dollarama no strain relief uh, really short white one doing terribly. Don't forget this thing's only you know this thing's only about a meter long. Pink dollar store one did not too bad as well but now to relate it to the length I correlated that voltage drop per 100 centimeters so the ones that had less than 100 centimeters which is one meter or uh, just over three feet, uh, they had an increased drop and the ones that were below they had it, yeah. So anyways, it's related to the length. As you can see, the Pizos is better than the Anchor. This is hard to believe because the Anchor is an expensive cable. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it, it's very expensive. It's from a known brand. The Pizos did better, which is something I didn't expect, especially since the Pizos uh, is much more flexible so I I really didn't think this would be that good of a result 
My pink dollar store one did not too bad, but the uh, LG G6 OEM one did pretty well. Um, but on a per length basis, the Pizzas, um, the my huge 10 foot cable and the anchor did better than it. But yeah, look at the terrible result for the um, the 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 short the short dollar store one. And so that's it. Um, this Pizza's cable is surprisingly good. I mean, the anchor cable is good as well, but I mean, I guess not as good per centimeter or per 10 centimeters than the uh, Pizza's. Uh, also surprising is this 10 foot cable is surprisingly useful. And of course you won't beat any kind of OEM quality the LG G6 OEM cable. I would have loved to throw my uh, Pixel 3a cable in, but it was a uh, USB-C on both sides and I only rigged up a USB-A. So yeah, this is my number one go-to cable aside from when I'm next to my PC and I just need a little bit of uh, pink plus LED lighting in my life. Do you have anything to add to my methodology? Should I test more cables? Well, if I had more cables, I would. I do have some micro USB ones I could test. Let me know if this is interesting at all. And uh, if you're a manufacturer that makes cables and you're watching, send me your cables. I'll put them through the same tests. Thanks for watching.